Good morning and welcome to Kennesaw Family Life Church. We're so glad you're joining us this morning. In case you've never been here before though, I'm going to send it over to Jocelyn and I as we give you the tour. Hello and welcome. We're so glad you're here. Yes. And because it's your first time, mm -hmm. we're giving you a look around this the tour, if you will. Explaining what all the buttons and little tabs are for. Huzzah. There we <laughs> go. Starting with in this screen, in the black part of the screen where we are watching our faces, you'll see a little button that says request prayer. Cute friendly that, bubble guy. What, what that does mm -hmm. is opens a private chat window. Boom. So whoever's hosting the online service will be able to speak with you privately, not in the main chat, and get your prayer requests and pray with you right then. Mm -hmm. Next up we have the notes tab. It'll be down there or there, depending on if you're on a computer or a mobile. Um, so that'll open up the notes for the sermon today. You can follow along in there. You can't alter it in any way, but we have a solution for that. Stay tuned. That is right. And next to that notes tab is the Bible tab. Mm -hmm. And that is going to take you to the Bible. The U version version of the Bible. U version version. You like that? I did. <laughs> so yeah, you can just type in whatever scripture and follow along with whatever the message is taking you to. Mm -hmm. which takes us up to the top of the screen. Up there. So if you're on the mobile device, you'll have to click the little three well, lines hamburgers. and get to that. If you're on your computer, you can just see them right up at the top. Mm -hmm. Right. And it's going to be the giving button. So up there. And uh, does takes no time at all, practically. It's super easy. I encourage you to take a look at it. That is correct. Mm -hmm. And then on the second one, that's going to be our volunteer button. Mm -hmm. All of these buttons pretty much take you to the website. Yes. Um, so the volunteer one is going to take you to the volunteer page where mm -hmm. you can get to Forever Fed's volunteer link mm -hmm. and also the city of Kennesaw's volunteer link mm -hmm. and any other ones that we happen to be throwing up there that month mm -hmm. that you may want to get to quickly. Yes. So. Ooh, excellent. Uh, and then we have sermon notes. That is right. So this is the editable one. It'll take you to a little PDF, which you can print off. You can edit on your computer. Um, and so that's fun. You get to like make it your own. There you go. You can print and fill in the blanks. Mm -hmm. That's right. And then uh, also right next to that one, we have a prayer button. Yes. Not to be confused with the prayer button in this screen. That one's going to take you to our website prayer page where you can fill out a prayer request form and that will email Pastor Larry and I on uh, what your prayer request is. And mm -hmm. we will add that to our weekly prayer list where we pray as a church every Monday through Thursday. Woohoo! Last but not least, we have the calendar button. So that's going to take you to the calendar, beautifully edited and produced by Pastor Jen. Uh, and it's, Robbie. And Robbie. I didn't know Robbie <laughs> did that too. Anyway, well, Jen and Robbie. And uh, it's essentially our newsletter. So it has more than the calendar, a lot more fun stuff that I encourage you to check out, but it definitely has the calendar, the dates, and all the fun stuff that we're doing in the current month. And the beautiful event uh, slides that Robbie makes too. Hey! To Those are great. highlight the events mm -hmm. happening. So that's it, guys. Yeah. That's your way around the screen. So now you can consider yourself You've had the, the tour. And I'm back. Thanks again for being with us online this morning. Every week, we try and get to know each other a little better by asking a get to know you kind of question. So that kind of helps us grow as a church family to get to know each other. So this week's question, we're still sticking with the fall theme, being that we just hit fall last Sunday. Um, it is going to be what movie or TV show always reminds you of fall. So take a couple minutes, talk about it in the chat, and we'll be right back with my answer.
and it's me again. So uh, I hope you took a couple minutes to talk about your answer in the chat. Um, for me, I think one of the things that I always like to watch in the fall, and so it always reminds me of fall when I see it other times of year, is uh, to the two Charlie Brown specials. Um, the Great Pumpkin Charlie Brown and the Charlie Brown Thanksgiving. I love those specials. They're not that long and they're just always, they're very nostalgic for me, I guess. So those always remind me of fall. So I hope you shared your answer in the chat window. If you haven't yet, there's still time while I tell you where you can get connected this week, starting with today. Today is our Forever Fed Food Pantry. Uh, volunteers need to show up at 3.30 at the church and uh, the food drive through food pantry starts at 4 and we go at 4 to 5 with that. So if you are volunteering, please get there a bit early. If you don't show up around 3.30, it's going to be really hard to get into the parking lot and get a parking space. So, um, And then Monday through Thursday of this week, we have our 7.14 a.m. Zoom only prayer time. That's a great time to start your day together with your church family. Um, we share a little devotion and we pray over the needs of our church and the community. So that is a wonderful way to start your day. If you need the codes for that, let us know. We're happy to share those with you. And then Wednesday morning, directly following the prayer time, the guys meet at uh, Honeysuckle Biscuits and Bakery. So that is their weekly Wednesday morning meeting right after prayer. So they usually start about 7.30, 7.35 and go to about nine. You don't have to stay that long if you have to get to work, um, but it is a nice time to get to know each other a bit better. And then this coming Saturday is our first Saturday of the month and we have our women's get together. So that is gonna be at 10.30 at desktop. Also, I'd like to mention the city has an event Friday, since it's October on Friday. Uh, it is the first Friday concert series, and that starts at 7 p.m. in downtown Kennesaw. So if you wanna get connected more in the community and show up at some of those events, which I highly recommend doing, getting to know more people, um, that's gonna be happening Friday at 7. So those are the things happening this week where you can get connected. I hope that we see you at at least one of them. So before we move on with the rest of our service, let's just take a moment to pray together. Let's pray that God will speak to us today while we're here in service together. Pray with me now. Father, I'm so thankful for all that you've done and all that you've given us, God. You are so worthy to receive our praise and sometimes I feel I don't praise you often enough. But God, this morning I come together with my church family to lift you up and to give you praise and glory. I pray that you would draw us close to you as we worship you. Lord, as we give of our music and our finances and our time, God, to serve you, that we would be drawn closer to you. Help us to do it all out of the, a pure heart. Lord, we just want to see people come to know you. Speak to us this morning during the service, I pray. Be with each person that's online this morning. Help us to follow hard after you, God. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's worship him with our music this morning. Good morning. I hope that you are ready to worship God with your music and your voice this morning. Let's worship him together as we sing. Every 
the darkness closes in, Lord, still I will say, blessed be the name of the Lord, blessed be your name, blessed be the name of the Lord, blessed be your glorious name.
and positions your name stands above them all and the angels cry holy all creation cries holy you are lifted high
darkness, my God, that is who you
Thank you, Pastor Jennifer, for leading us in a time of worship. We're going to take a few minutes and pray over the needs of our community. This is part of the reason we gather together is to pray for one another, to lift one another up. I want to remind you to click that prayer button. If you have a need, that will open up a window and allow one of our hosts to pray with you. It can add your prayer request to our, our weekly list. You can do that by email as well. I also want to remind you of our community partners for this month, which is the City Council for Kennesaw, uh, New Salem Baptist Church, and the Deweys. So we want to make sure that we are praying for them, lifting them up. Again, we're going to pray over physical needs. We're going to pray over financial needs. Uh, we're going to pray over our offering. We take this time to pray over our offering. We want to thank you for being faithful givers. We want to, that's part of that first fruits, uh, giving it to God. Um, that he asked us to do. So we want to pray over that as well. So let's, let's pray together. Father, we are so grateful to be in your presence. Lord, we're thankful for bringing us and putting us together and in this community. And we ask right now that you would help us, that you would meet every need that's there. Lord, we pray over our, our community partners today. We lift up the Kennesaw City Council to you. We ask that you would touch them and bless them. We also pray over New Salem Baptist Church. We ask that you would give them an amazing service this morning, that they would draw close to you, that they would draw others to you. And Lord, we pray over our missionaries, the Deweys this month, meet every need that they have. And Lord, I pray that you would provide for them. We ask that you would provide for each one of us. Lord, your word tells us that we are to be cheerful givers, that we are to be faithful in our finances. And Lord, we ask right now that you would bless our offering, that you would help us to be good stewards of what you've given us, Lord. For those that are struggling financially right now, I pray that you would provide for them. I pray that you would open up doors for those that need jobs, that you would give us favor in our work, that you would help us to use what we have wisely. Father, I pray for those that are struggling physically in their bodies. Lord, there are many that are battling with cancer, diabetes, Lord, arthritis, ongoing health issues. And we pray right now that you would bring healing, that you would heal those things, that you would restore health as your word says that you can. And Lord, I pray that we would put our trust in you with our health. Lord, we ask that you would touch our minds, that you would help us where we get attacked the most in our minds. And Lord, I pray that you would relieve anxiety, fear, depression. Lord, those areas that the enemy likes to attack us. And we pray right now that you would help us to find your joy and peace in all things. Lord, we want to honor you in those things. Lord, I pray that you would help us to be a good example to everybody that's around us. Lord, we pray over our nation. We ask that as we enter into election season that, that we would elect the right person to be our president, that, Father, we would put our trust in you as our God. And, Lord, we ask that you would touch our president, our governor, uh, our mayor, those that are running for office. Lord, I pray that you would just give us wisdom during this tumultuous time. And, Lord, we pray that you would keep us in your hands today. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, welcome to part 13 of our journey through Matthew. We've been on this for three months now, and we're right in the middle of a section in Matthew that's known as the Sermon on the Mount. Uh, Matthew wrote this to Jews, and, and we have a lot of background of Jesus. We see him uh, kind of come up. We see his lineage. We see him get baptized. We see him get it, go through the temptations in the wilderness. Then he goes and begins preaching the same thing that John the Baptist did, repent for the kingdom of God is near. And we know that he is talking about himself. He is that representation. He is the kingdom of God on the earth at this time. And we know that when he comes again, he ushers in the kingdom of God for all of us, for all eternity, that we want to be citizens of the kingdom. And so he goes into this Sermon on the Mount, which is talking about what it means to be a child of the kingdom. And, and so he sees this crowd that's gathering. Remember, he's been 
preaching. He's been healing people. He's got disciples following him. And then crowds gather everywhere he goes. And he sees this crowd gather and he sits down, which was the custom of that day that the rabbis and the teachers would sit down and people would gather around him. So you can't imagine that, that this was a huge crowd. We don't know. But it was an important crowd. There was disciples there. That the, the audience was probably primarily Jew, but we don't know. And he's speaking to those. Many of them were probably poor. And so he's speaking to this audience and he's talking to them and he's giving them these instructions of what it means to follow God, to be a part of the kingdom of heaven. That's why I think it was mostly Jews because he used terminology that would have been familiar to the Jews. They knew that the Messiah would proceed the kingdom of heaven coming to earth. They knew that the Messiah was the one that would come in and change things. And so Jesus is that representation. So let me ask you this. As we get into this, we're right in the middle of the Sermon on the Mount. Jesus shifts gears a little bit. So let me ask you this. What are some of the biggest concerns that you have in life? And you can take and, and drop them in the chat if you want to. It's a great time to interact if you're able to. But what are some of the biggest concerns that you have in life? Or if you want to get more general, if you don't want to get personal, what are some of the biggest concerns that most people have? Things like money, health, their families or providing for their families, their job. Uh, there, uh, there could be a million things on there, but those are some of the things that weigh heavy on most of us. Especially right now, I, I mean, our economy is in a weird place. Inflation's been on the rise. I went to Costco this past week and everything seemed to have gone up like even another dollar or two. And so you recognize it on the things that you buy the most and you, you feel that pain. And, and so money is often an issue or getting to that next place in your job, being able to earn more money, it, it all kind of wraps around together. Well, in that, we can often get our focus off track. We can get looking at the wrong things. And so today we're going to spend time talking about healthy focus, but we're going to start out with an unhealthy focus. And you're going to see where this goes. We're going to get into Matthew chapter 16 in a few minutes. If you want to go ahead and get there, we're going to be in Matthew 16 verse 19 is where we're going to start. A couple weeks ago, for those that were in our in-person, I didn't mention on the online, but I'm going to talk about it for a minute. I mentioned a term called targeting. And it's not targeting that you, well, you get targeting in, in football where they would intentionally go after and hit somebody. But in the world of bicycles and motorcycles, it's really common racing, driving. Targeting is when our focus gets on something and then we drive straight towards it. And I had a friend uh, who was, we were out with a group of us out riding the motorcycles uh, one Saturday morning and we were on a casual ride. We're going through a neighborhood, a really slow corner. I think the speed limit was like 30 miles an hour, not a, not a fast corner. And, uh, and there was a lady with us who was, was fairly new to riding a motorcycle. And we went into this very gradual corner and she fixated on the bushes and the sidewalk in front of her and never turned the bike. The corner went this way and she went straight into the sidewalk. She crashed. She wasn't hurt did minor damage to her motorcycle, but she just could not turn. Her focus went there and she just could not turn. All she could see was what was right in front of her. That's what happens when our focus is unhealthy. When our focus gets off of what it should be, we go right straight towards that thing that maybe is, is going to wipe us out or hurt us, get us off track. So our focus needs to be in the right place. And wherever our focus is, that's where our heart and our attention will be. Wherever we're putting our time, uh, think about it this way. I'll give you a great example. Maybe you're thinking about getting a new car and you want that new car and, and maybe it's a Corvette. And so you've been researching out Corvettes. It's been a dream of yours for a long time. Do you know what, when you start looking at that, what you see on the road, you see every Corvette that's out there. It seems like there are a million more Corvettes than have ever existed because you see them everywhere because that's what your focus has been on. That's where your attention has been and all of a sudden you're seeing it everywhere. Nothing bad about that, but when we get our focus in the wrong place, it takes our eyes off of where we should be going 
and takes us to a place where we, we shouldn't be. And, and sometimes that focus is on good things, but that pulls our attention away from, from where we should be. So Jesus addresses this issue in a very practical way. And so I want to look at verse, verses 19 through 24 of chapter 6. I want to remind you, I read out the New Living Translation, so it may be different than what you are normally reading from, and that's okay. New Living is a great translation. It's not always the best translation, but it is a good translation, and it, it explains Scripture very well. So let's start in verse 19. It says, Don't store up treasures here on earth where moths eat them and rust destroy them, and where thieves break in and steal. Store your treasures in heaven where moths and rust cannot destroy, and thieves don't break in and steal. Wherever your treasure is, there your desires of your heart will also be. Your eye is like a lamp that provides light for your body. When your eye is healthy, your whole body is filled with light. But when your eye is unhealthy, your whole body is filled with darkness. And if The light you think you have is actually darkness, how deep that darkness is. No one can serve two masters, for you will hate one and love the other. You will be devoted to one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and be enslaved to money. So let me ask a question. What does Jesus mean by storing up treasures in heaven? Maybe you've been around church for a long time and you have a Pretty good idea of what that means, but, but what does Jesus mean when he talks about storing up treasures in heaven? Feel free, again, please drop things in the chat. I don't mind if you're chatting while the message is going on. That's actually, I, I would really love it if that happened because that's part of our growth. That's part of our learning. I think for us to understand what storing our treasures up in heaven means, we first have to define what treasure is. And treasure is those things we value the most. That's what a treasure is. It's it's something of value. For many of us, it's money, it's status, it's accumulated things. And for others, it's relationships, it's family, it's helping others. What is your treasure? And, And treasure is what we focus on. It's what we value. And Jesus is saying, hey, store up treasure that has eternal value. Store up treasures in heaven. Not just amass wealth here on earth. Not just amass status and notoriety. It's not just about money. He ends this with talking about being enslaved to money, but really it's interchangeable. This money is easy to relate it to, but this could be anything. This could be Man, your focus could be so much on getting to that next promotion, to becoming the CEO of your company, to being that person that's in charge, the one that everybody's coming to, just that notoriety of of being the one. Could be something like presidents. Uh, It could be somebody, a position of power. Politics gets into that. There's a lot of ego, and, and people sometimes don't really care about the real issues, they just want to be that person in power, and those are the worst people to elect because they only care about themselves. I think that's what's so frustrating about our political system. We feel like we, we, we got people that, that they're all about themselves, and, and we understand the system is flawed, it's broken. And this isn't about politics, but I think you get the, under, the idea Jesus talked about it in the last passage about the Pharisees that they, man, they would go and beat, you know, they would pray in the synagogues. They like sitting at the best tables. They'd wear the fine robes and all those things to bring attention upon themselves. That was their focus. It wasn't on bringing people closer to Jesus. It wasn't on teaching people the truth about God. It was about maintaining their own control and power. I think it's why this passage follows that. So the treasures are the things we value most. They're the things that we put our priority on. So Jesus reminds us, and I I think this is interesting. When I I used to read this years ago, I would would get to verses 22 and 23, and it, it talks about our eyes being a lamp to our soul in the midst of treasures. Because for years, we've just taught about the treasures being, and we would do these great messages on money and tithing, which are important, by the way. We should be tithing. We should manage our money well, but that passage is not just about money. Our treasures could be anything. 
Anything we put extreme value on is a treasure to us. It could be that book that somebody gave you that, that was super important to you. That can be a treasure. So Jesus reminds us in verses 22 and 23 that your eye is like a lamp that provides light for your body. When your eye is healthy, your whole body is filled with light. But when your eye is unhealthy, your whole body is filled with darkness. And if that light you think you actually have is darkness, how deep that darkness is. I think the reason Jesus puts that in there and just, it seems kind of out of place, but really what he's saying is, this is what you're focused on. What you're putting in, where, you're, where your eyes are focused they're either pouring light into your life or they're pouring darkness. And when we get our focus off the things that matter, we're filling our lives with things that distract us and pull us away from God and pull us away from the things that, that are really heavenly treasures. The things that are going to matter for eternity. We, we talk about it. We, we all love stuff. We're, we're Americans. It's probably one of our biggest downfalls. We have a lot of things. And for some people, they feel like, man, if, we can, if I can just get more stuff, it's going to fill that gap. It's going to make me happy. If I just get more money, it's going to make me happy. We can get all of these things, but those things don't really matter in eternity. When we die, we leave with the same things we have when we came into this world. Nothing. But what we store up in heaven, what really matters, what matters to God, what matters in that next life is what's really important. So when we get our focus off those things, it can fill our life with darkness. We can, we can get focused on advancing our career and we don't care who we stab or what we do to get there. And we can get focused on just amassing money so we lie and cheat and steal so we can have for ourselves. It creates this unhealthy heart. It creates this unhealthy focus. So are you focused on self-pleasure? Are you focused on all the chaos and fear around you? Do you have an unhealthy focus? Let me put this into a different perspective. You've heard this story before, and this is actually covered in a few weeks in Matthew chapter 14, but I want to talk about it for a minute. The, if you remember, Jesus sends his disciples out on a boat, and it's, it gets storm gets coming. It's, it's hard to row. There's lots of wind, big waves. And Jesus comes walking out and they think he's a ghost. They're like, whoa, there's a ghost out there. They freak out. And Jesus is like, whoa, wait a minute. It's just me. That's where we're going to pick up in, in Matthew 14, 27. It says, but Jesus spoke to them at once and said, don't be afraid. He said, take courage. I am here. Then Peter called out to him and said, Lord, if it's really you, tell me to come to you walking on the water. Yes, come, Jesus said. So Peter went over the side of the boat and walked on the water toward Jesus. But when he saw the strong wind and waves, he was terrified and began to sink. Save me, Lord, he shouted, and Jesus immediately reached out and grabbed him. You have so little faith, Jesus said. Why did you doubt me? The reason I shared this is, is because Peter's focus. Peter was bold. I love Peter. He said, hey, Jesus, that's you. Tell me to come out of the boat. And he does. He gets out of the boat and he starts walking on the water and everything's great. As long as he's going towards Jesus, he's focused on Jesus. He knows that he can do this. But what happens when he starts to focus on the wind and the waves? The, the storm and the trials that are around him, he begins to sink. And he cries out to Jesus and Jesus rescues him, which is awesome. But Jesus also says, hey, why do you have so little faith? Why did you doubt me? He doubted him after he already got out of the boat. He doubted him after Jesus already told him. He's already walking on the water. And he begins to doubt. Think about it this way. Some of us have been Christians for a long time. And something happens in our lives. Because look, despite what some people believe, just because you're a Christian doesn't mean that life is always going to be rosy, that you're always going to have money in the bank, that you're always going to have food on your table, that you're always going to have everything that you want. There's going to be bumps in life. You're going to lose loved ones unexpectedly sometimes. You might lose a job. Things might get really hard. There might be a sickness And 
there's this storm that's coming at you. And Jesus says, look, just come to me. Just focus on me and you're going to be okay. Just focus on me. But we get caught up in that storm. We see all that. We see the bills piling up. We see all these things. And so what do we do? We try to fix it ourselves. We try to take our matters in our own hands and we begin to sink. It's a great example. As long as Peter was focused on Jesus, the wind and storm didn't affect him. But as soon as he put his focus on what was around him, he, he began to sink. It's a great illustration for our lives. Often we don't even realize we're sinking. We get focused on our jobs. I, man, I think, of, I think of people that, really high achieving people, they get so focused on achieving at work and, and making that promotion and making that next thing and making that next sale that they're, they're working 10 to 15 hours a day trying to be the best at what they do. And, and look, there's seasons with that, I understand. But they do that year after year after year and, and realize that they've missed games that their kids played in. They've missed plays that their kids were a part of. They haven't spent time with their wife or their spouse could be a husband. It doesn't matter. It goes both ways, not just a, a guy issue. I just say it that way because I'm a guy. But they miss time with their spouse and they, they get so focused and consumed at achieving and, and they tell themselves, well, if I just get to that next level, I'll be able to provide for my family. I'll be able to provide for my family. And in the back of their mind, they, de they, they deceive themselves into thinking that if I get here, everything else is going to be fine. At the sacrifice of their family and relationships. And one day they wake up and they're lonely. I think that's part of the reason that, that so often you see families that are husbands and wives have been married 20, 25 years and kids growing up and get out of the house and all of a sudden they look around and they're like, I don't even know who you are. The focus has been on all of these other things. It's lonely and it's broken. We can do that. We do it all the time. We often don't realize we're sinking. We don't realize that, that we've lost focus. Our relationship with God wanes. All of a sudden, coming to church doesn't seem quite as important. Maybe we tithe. Maybe we don't. It doesn't have to be just storms. Sometimes it's just that distraction and that focus on achieving, that focus on getting to that next level. We don't realize that we're empty. They were missing it. That's why you hear of so many really wealthy business people and, and actors and sports stars that, that maybe hit it big and they, they start making all this money, start having all these things, all this fame, and they get there and they find out, you know what, that stuff's all empty. It doesn't really satisfy the way I thought it would. Because the focus is on the wrong things. So I want to look at Mark 8, 36 through 37. Jesus talks about this. He says, And what do you benefit if you gain the whole world but lose your own soul? Is anything worth more than your soul? We've, you've probably heard that verse quoted. Now, the Jesus. what's interesting is Jesus made this statement right after... He told them that the Son of Man must suffer terrible things and be killed. And actually, if you go back even a statement before that, he was sitting with his disciples and he said, who do people say that I am? And they're like, well, some say you're Elijah. And he you know, went through all this list and Peter, he said, but who do you say that I am? And Peter says, the Christ, the Son of God. So Peter had just said that. And he said, yes, nobody's told you that. Well done. Don't tell anybody, but well done. That's, you're right. And then he goes on. And he, he talks about how the Son of Man is going to be killed, that he's going to be turned over, he's going to be beaten, he's going to be killed, and that he's going to raise again. And, and Peter, Peter rebukes Jesus for saying that. Peter was bold about a lot of things, but in his mind, he's still looking for this political Messiah. And for him, how can the Messiah die? 
And so Jesus, re- or Peter rebukes him. If you look at, at Mark 8, 33 through 38, you were gonna, we read part of this already. It says, Jesus turned around and looked at his disciples, then reprimanded Peter, go away from me, Satan. Same guy that just said, hey, you're the son of God. He's saying, go away from me, Satan. You are seeing things merely from a human point of view, not from God's. He was focusing on the human side. Then calling the crowd to join his disciples, he said, If anyone wants to be my follower, you must give up your own way, take up your cross, and follow me. If you try to hang on to your life, you'll lose it. But if you give up your life for my sake and for the sake of the good news, you'll save it. And what benefit if you gain the whole world but lose your own soul? Is anything worth more than your soul? If anyone is ashamed of me and my message in these audacious and sinful days, the Son of Man will be ashamed of that person when he returns in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. Look, he's saying, look, my coming and redeeming mankind is the most important thing. Following me is the most important thing. When you get your focus on all this other stuff, hey, Peter, you're looking at this from a human perspective. You've got an unhealthy focus. And Rebecca rebuked him. He said, get behind me, Satan. unhealthy focus. This life is not all there is. And when we hold on to the things of this life, if we focus on the things of this life, if, the, if that's all this world means to us, we're going to have a lot of fear. We're going to have a lot of anxiety. We're going to have a lot of worry. Because every health bump in our life is going to throw us out. Every time we lose a job or struggle and have a financial hit, it's going to just about take us out. Every time that what we are focused on doesn't work out the way that we think it should, it's going to take us out. Because we've got our focus in the wrong place. Just like Peter. When he saw the wind and the waves, he began to sink. His focus and priorities were mixed up. And it catches up to us. I really believe... That, that's why we have so many mental health issues today that, that we're seeing it in a, in a very big way. Um, and this is just an opinion. I, I don't mind saying it that way. But when you, you look at the effects of social media and you look at the effects of all this stuff where we, we've gotten focused on people liking what we produce on social media and we've based our value on how many likes we get and how many followers we have or we put our value into how much we've accumulated when we get our focus on those other things it creates that anxiety and fear we're afraid that somebody's going to take away from us what we've held on to and so what do we do we defend ourselves we defend what we have and we we cheat and we lie and we steal and we harm others to hold on to what we think is of value. And we know that's a dark thing. We know that's, that's, that's wrong because it's hurting people around us to hold on to what we have. And Jesus said, look, our focus should be on him, on the things of God on doing that so that we don't have that worry and that fear. We've got to have our focus in the right place. So I want to talk about a healthy focus for a few minutes. Again, don't get distracted by the mental health thing. I just see that as something in our culture that has been very affected. It's affected a lot of of our kids, our young adults, even our adults, where are the concerns and focus because of turmoil in the world, because of financial instability, all of this stuff, plus the internet, has all created something that's very difficult for us to handle emotionally. And look, I don't look down at people that struggle in those things. I know their struggles are real. That's why I try to help people focus on the right things so that we can help them work through those things. So here's a healthy focus. Matthew 6, 25 through 34 says this. That is why I tell you not to worry about everyday life. This is Jesus still continuing this conversation. Whether you have enough food and drink or enough clothes to wear, 
Isn't life more than food and your body more than clothing? Look at the birds. They don't plant or harvest or store food in barns, for your heavenly Father feeds them. And aren't you far more valuable to Him than they are? Can all your worries add a single moment to your life? And why worry about your clothing? Look at the lilies of the field and how they grow. They don't work or make their own clothing, yet Solomon in all his glory was not dressed as beautifully as they are. And if God cares so wonderfully for wildflowers that are here today and thrown into the fire tomorrow, he will certainly care for you. Why do you have so little faith? So don't worry about these things saying, what will I eat? What will we drink? What will I wear? These things dominate the thoughts of unbelievers. But your heavenly Father already knows all of your needs. Seek the kingdom of God above all else and live righteously and he will give you everything you need. Need is the key there, by the way. So don't worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow brings its own worries. Today's trouble is enough for today. What is Jesus telling us here? What is our focus to be? Well, the first thing he's telling us is worry does not add a single thing to our lives. If anything, it takes it away. When we sit there and focus on these, all the trouble and struggles that are around us, it doesn't add anything to our lives. It, it causes heart issues. It causes stress, anxiety, even diabetes, that worry, that constant stress. The constant anxiety. Where should our focus be? He said to seek the kingdom of God above all else, to, to be in right relationship with God, to, to be at peace with Him, to understand and be in right relationship with Him. That should be our first priority. I think for us to understand this, we have to look back at the greatest commandment. It's one that we quote often here, but it really makes the most sense in this context. At Matthew 22, 37 through 40, it says this, Jesus replied, you must love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, and all your mind. And second and equally as important is to love your neighbor as yourself. The entire law and all the demands of the prophets are based on these two commands. Love God. That's our first priority. That's where our first focus should be is in growing our relationship with God and loving Him. Talked about prayer, and we read the Lord's Prayer last week, and the Lord's Prayer starts with, Hallowed be your name. Lord, I praise you. Thank you for creating me. Thank you for giving me breath today. Lord, I honor you above all things. How do you want me to live today? How do you want me to, what do you want me to focus on today? That's where we start. Seek the kingdom of God above all else. And then love your neighbors yourself. So if we're focused on growing in our relationship with God, then we're going to do what Jesus did, which he loved. He served everybody that was around him. The only people he ever chastised, the only people he ever rebuked were those that had their priorities wrong. The, the religious leaders that were focused more on keeping power and keeping people under rules than bringing people towards God, he rebuked them. Not all religious leaders, the ones that were abusing power. He rebuked those that had little faith. Trust in Him. That's what He's saying. Put your focus on Me. I'm the one that's going to take you to eternity where you don't have to worry about any of these things. Love the things God loved. Love the people God loved. He loved others and sought to draw people towards the kingdom. That was Jesus' whole purpose was to restore us in the right relationship with God. And He was always drawing people to to us, and then he told us to go and do the same. That's why serving others is so satisfying. So when we serve others, we're, we're emulating Jesus the most, and it gives us joy, it gives us peace when we get to serve somebody, show them love and respect. Look, there's nothing wrong with doing well in your job. There's nothing wrong with getting promotions and making money. Just because you're wealthy doesn't mean you're far from God. You can have the right focus and God can bless you and give you great wealth. That's up to God. He's the one that provides everything for us. We have to be focused on Him 
and the things that he's put before us. And that doesn't mean that we go into full-time vocational pastoral ministry. That means that as business owners, as, as coffee shop employees, as uh, any p- job or position that you want, any person, whether employed or unemployed, that we do everything that's before us to the best of our ability, that we treat others with love and respect, and that we help draw them towards Him, that we honor God with our lives, and then we've, we're doing this. So it all comes down to our focus. An unhealthy focus is more about ourselves. Remember, sin, I told you, definition of sin is putting what we want before God and before others. When, we're, when our focus is unhealthy, it's focusing on ourselves, getting consumed with what we want, what we think is important, and not spending time with God and not putting our priorities in the right place. A healthy focus is focusing on God first and drawing others towards Him. Building good relationships in our families as well as in our communities. Loving on people. Drawing them towards God. This comes with a promise, by the way, and this is what I want to end with today. Look at the promise that he gives us in this. Verses 31 through 33. It says, Don't worry about these things, saying, What will we eat? What will we drink? What will we wear? These things dominate the thoughts of unbelievers. But your heavenly Father already knows what you need. Seek the kingdom of God above all else and live righteously and he will give you everything you need. That promise, when we follow after God, we don't have to be perfect. To live righteously is to seek after him. His righteousness is ours. So if we're in right relationship with God, we're living righteously. We're following after him. And it says that he will give us everything that we need. Usually beyond what we need. God's blessings are big but he'll give us everything that we need. We'll have the food that we need. We'll have the clothes that we need. We'll have the house that we need. It may be different than what we expect. It may not look like what we dreamed it did, but we can be satisfied in him knowing that he is going to provide everything that we need. He is what sustains us. That's why our focus needs to be on him first and on loving others. Yes, we're to provide for our families. We're to work hard. We're to do our jobs. As as employees, we should be the best workers out there. Do the very best that we can and honor God with our lives. And He will give us what we need. And see, I think that's where that peace that passes understanding comes in Philippians. That when we put our trust in Him, He will give us a peace that passes all understanding. Because we know all these other things are going to work out, even in the middle of the storm. Even in the midst of a storm, all things are going to work out. He's going to take care of them. That's what he's promised. Doesn't mean we won't go through hard times. Doesn't mean that we won't get hurt or that there won't be difficulty. It just means that he will care for us. That's the promise. So are you struggling today? Is your focus off? Are you consumed with all of the stuff that's around you? And yeah, it's stressful. Look, it's natural to have stress. It's natural if you're struggling, if you're without a job and you're you're concerned about where things... Yeah, it's tough. It's natural. Lean into Him. Put your focus on Him. He will provide. It's easier said than done, but it is necessary. My family's living proof. God has always taken care of us. Put your trust in Him as we pray today. Ask God to help you to put your focus on Him today. If you're struggling with worry and fear, doubt, whatever that is, ask Him to help you to be able to focus on Him, to be able to trust Him with all these things. And look, God is patient. Even if you don't get it right today, He is patient. Just move towards Him. Let's pray. Father, I thank You for what You're doing. Thank you for what you're going to do. I thank you for the promise that if we will just focus on you, you'll take care of whatever we need. Lord, help us to focus on you. Help us to get ourselves to a place where we can fully trust you in all areas of our lives. Lord, it's so hard for us. Our sinful nature gets in the way. 
our fear gets in the way. Lord, forgive us for our doubt and help us to focus on you today. Thank you for loving us and caring for us right where we are. And we ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Look, God doesn't expect you to be perfect today. All he asks is for you to move towards him. God bless you, and we'll see you next time. Hi, guys. It's me one more time. Thanks for joining us for the whole service today. Don't forget that we don't close out that chat window right away. Even after the video ends, it stays open for a while. So feel free to hang out, talk to each other, get to know each other better because God made us to do life together. He doesn't want you to do life alone. We're so glad that you joined us today. Since you couldn't be here in person, uh, we love to see you online. Um, let me remind you where you can get connected this week. Starting with today, we have our Forever Fed Food Pantry. Volunteers arrive at 3.30. The food pantry starts at 4. Then Monday through Thursday, we have our morning prayer time at 7.14 a.m. That is Zoom only. Wednesday morning, the guys have their get-together um, at 7.30, 7.35, right after prayer. And that's at Honeysuckle Biscuits and Bakery. And then the women have their get-together Saturday morning at 10.30 at uh, Kennesaw Coffee, Desktop, Church, how, whatever you want to call it. It's the same building. Um, but we'll meet there at 10.30 just to hang out and get to know each other a bit better and have some fun. Um, and then don't forget there's also the city event for the first Friday concert that's done in downtown Kennesaw at 7 p.m. on Friday. So... That's where you can get connected this week. Pick up your phone, encourage someone, and we hope to see you again next week. Bye, guys.